Our show is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phone, Kindle Fire, and other devices with Stitcher. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or on Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. This morning's scripture comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Pray with me, if you will. With steadfast love and abundant grace, hear God's word as people of faith. May the words from my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God. So Paul probably wrote this letter, they believe, in 57 AD. And he was staying in Corinth at the time. He had not yet visited Rome and he knew still many, many people in the Roman church, both Gentile and Jewish Christians, were all attending the Roman church at the time. So Paul had established at this point many churches, but he was always so cautious not to upset anyone's work. But he thought it would be okay to write the Romans because no one established that church in particular. So he can write them and possibly pay a visit. He wouldn't visit Rome until three years after he wrote the letter that Tara read so beautifully. And he came there as a prisoner. And he would be there for three years, from about 60 to 63 AD. What I love about Paul in his writing is it's always so practical. And I discovered why, in studying to research to write this, he always wrote to his friends that he knew. So he's writing this letter to close friends, maybe acquaintances, giving them advice that always ends with ethical demands that govern anyone. He tells us here, one, present your bodies to God. Two, know and accept yourself. And three, use the gifts that God gave you. So presenting our bodies to God, that is actually a characteristically Christian demand. During this time, the Greeks really believed that only your soul mattered and your body was just this prison holding it in. For Christians, they really felt that your body belonged to God just as much as your soul did. Paul tells us here in this letter that our bodies are specifically built to worship. And it's built specifically to worship God. Take your body, take all the tasks that you do every day, take the ordinary work of the factory and offer everything you do as a gift of worship to the Lord. That's the message version. So what is worship? I love word origins. Worship comes from the Latin word latreuin. Now, originally it meant for work, for hire, or pay. Worship then changed and then came to mean to serve, 
and then generally came to mean that which a man gives his whole life. And that is the definition of worship. It is giving everything you have, dedicating your life and your service to God. Somehow, though, over the centuries, worship came to mean something that happened only in church. But Paul here reminds us what worship truly is. And it doesn't have to, have to happen in the walls of this sanctuary to be considered worship. So we can say, I go to the church to worship God. But real worship, offering everyday life to God, would be, I brush my teeth to worship God. I eat breakfast to worship God. I take care of my family to worship God. I shop to worship God. I hang out with my girlfriends to worship God. I hug my dog to worship God. When Christ becomes the center of our life and the movement of our everyday being, it's presenting real worship by offering every moment, every breath, every action to the Lord. So a little story, kind of touching in on this. I have a Jack LaLanne juicer. I've been juicing for six years. The recipe has changed. I've told the ladies in the back. That's a whole other sermon why it had to change. But the process of buying the vegetables, cleaning them, chopping them into little bits so they fit in the juicer, juicing, opening up the four parts of the machine and cleaning takes about 20 to 30 minutes. It's a process, but I get six cups of delicious health-boosting juice. It's good for me. It's less expensive than going to a restaurant and having to make it or buying bottled juice that's not as fresh and it's really costly. So why wouldn't I do it? It's a process. And really, I think, oh, I'm exhausted just thinking about it. I haven't even done it yet. So what I do, and this is a true story, I stand in the kitchen and I yell to Norman, I'm juicing for Jesus. <laughs> It works. It works every time. Because if you think, well, Jesus might come over and have some juice, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it really diligently. So you can all do this in your life, too, with anything and everything that might feel like an obstacle. So think right now about something. It doesn't have to be the bane of your existence or something you dread. It could just be mundane. It could be something that's time-consuming. It could be a chore. Okay, I want you to think of that right now. Something that you've put off. And I want you, like it says in Romans 12:2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I want you to think of doing this task as worship to God. Think about it. It may change how you approach the task. You might even do it, number one. So that's already a big deal. But maybe you'll feel lighter. You might feel more grateful that you're doing it. Maybe you'll actually enjoy it. Anything is possible for the glory of God. It can be more enjoyable or at least easier. It's all in our attitude, it's all in our perspective. A mantra I really love is change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. I love that. Change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. It's so easy to complain in our everyday life. And I was so busy writing this the last two weeks and everything I just told you yesterday I really didn't do for half the day. And I was really disappointed in myself and even when we have all these blessings in front of us, we still find something to complain about. We focus on the negative so easily. We have these modern conveniences, yet nothing is fast enough. If you're blessed enough to have your own car, you might be the one getting honked at, or maybe you're honking at people. You're basically telling people, you don't drive as well as I do. Our egos get in the way. We act like spoiled children. We get what we want, and we're not grateful for it. And instead of having this opportunity to just be grateful for everything, we throw away a perfect opportunity for worship. Each moment, if we think of it, is a precious gift, right? It's a precious gift from God. But we tend to take advantage of God's generosity towards us. We taint moments with negative energy and bad attitudes. If we think of every action and thought as an offering to God, our approach would be so different. We just need to soften our hearts in those moments when we're really grumpy, allow the Holy Spirit in, and just let him lead us through our daily life. Then God can bring goodness and sweetness to every moment, no matter how bitter. We just have to renew our minds. Change the way you look at things, and the things you look at change. I read this wonderful new quote the other day from Marianne Williamson. She's an author and speaker. She's running for Congress. I really just love her words. She had a very famous quote that Nelson Mandela borrowed for his 94 inaugural speech. She had this on Facebook the other day. No matter what you do or where you go, 
God goes with you because he lives within your mind. He lives in you as you live in him. There is no distance to Brook. He's nearer than your breath to you. Believing this means little. Experiencing this means everything. You yourself are an extension of the mind of God. It's powerful words. Essentially, when we allow the negative to over, overpower God's grace that we were born with, we are screening God's call. Let us not block the call to worship in every minute and every second of the day. So knowing and accepting yourself. Last week, Norman gave a wonderful sermon on knowing thyself can be gnarly business. Well, we don't get very far in this world unless we know what we can and we cannot do. We need to do an honest assessment of our own capabilities without conceit, without false modesty. If we know this information, essentially, we can have a better life. Now, I know here, here we go. Sometimes we may feel, have you ever felt this way where you are feeling like you're going against a current during the day? You're pushing, you have to work harder, everything feels more difficult. It's dragging you down. You're going against the flow. There's a Japanese saying that all you need to do when you feel you're against the current or going upstream is you just turn around and float. Maybe we're trying to make something happen that isn't supposed to be. Now, this doesn't mean giving up on yourself or not believing in yourself. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying we can veer off our intended God-given path to pursue what we think is best for us. But if we're being genuinely honest with ourselves, we would realize maybe it's not for us. And we need to know our limits, accept them. And success is there for us, but it might not be exactly in the way you intended initially. You just can't give up, but try it a different way. Go with the flow. To quote William Barclay, cannot an earthworm serve God? The efficiency of the universe depends on God's humblest creatures. Is a general the only good soldier? Cannot the lowest private fight his best and give his life too? Happy are you if you are serving God, no matter what the task. On the other hand, I started thinking, what if you were feeling fearful, nervous, or hesitant about something? Maybe, just maybe, you're screening God's call in a very different way by not stepping up. This is possible. Sometimes you need to step back and be humble. Sometimes God is pushing you to step up. If you told me five years ago, Patty, you're going to be up there at 1030. You're going to write a sermon, and you're going to talk to the whole church about what you think about God's word. I would have laughed, and I wouldn't have just laughed a little. I would have had my hand on my stomach, and my head would have been back. <laughs> Surely you jest. God is a comedian, and he is laughing, laughing, laughing right now because I tried to screen this call. I tried. That's why I came up with the title of the sermon. I tried so hard to screen this call. And there are these moments that you have back-to-back -back Sundays. There's Laity Sunday, and all of a sudden the pastor's going on vacation. Oh, pastors take vacations. And all of a sudden God is a calling, and it, the phone is ringing off the hook, and he's blowing up my spiritual cell phone, and it's so loud. Bring, bring. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, somebody else answer this call. Bring, bring. Deanne will answer it. Deanne's going to answer this, right, Nylene? Bring, bring. And then Rachel calls in real life. I'm not hallucinating, and I answered, and she's like, you need to do a 1030. You're prepared for this. You've done it. You've done 815s. That's a nudge. That's what I always consider a God appointment. Have you ever been afraid to do something, and all signs and all things and all people point you towards this thing that you need to do, and you're still hesitant? God is calling when the schedule opens up and you have no more excuses. The phone's ringing, ring, and it's loud. And so I answer, um, hello? Yes, hi, God, yeah. Yes, I got your messages. I totally, I didn't get back to you because I was hoping Deanne would get back to you, and I'm so sorry. I know you know I wasn't really that busy. Yeah, I just, are you sure that you called the right person? Because I'm thinking maybe you meant someone else. Well, it's because I'm really scared, and what am I going to write, and what am I going to say, and why do they want to hear me? You're going to help me write it? Okay. Um, but I, I just, uh, okay, yeah, I'll do it. I love you too. Bye. 
<laughs> click, here we are, here we are. And I, it's not so bad, it's not so bad now. My heart's not racing at 100 beats per minute. So we present our bodies to God. We know and accept ourselves. We use the gifts God gave us. Whatever gifts we have comes from God, and Paul in the Bible calls this charismata. New Testament states that charisma is something given to a person by God, which the person themselves could not have acquired or attained. So every person in here right now and in the world has their own charisma. It could be for singing, it could be for art, playing a musical instrument, you might be a wonderful gardener, a teacher, you're a wonderful cook, you can play sports really well, crochet, whatever it is, you have this little extra something, this aptitude towards it that you wouldn't have on your own. God really gave that to you. So Paul says whatever we are gifted, we're required to use it for the contributing to the common good, especially of our church. And if we don't utilize these gifts, we are screening God's call again if we're not here. Pastor Joey is the face of our church, and he is our senior pastor, a vital part, of course, but he will be the first person to say he's not the one that makes this church run. And I can sit here and tell you to make Sunday happen, how much choir and Jeff and Roger practice in order to get ready for you. These little bulletins Nyleen puts together and works so diligently in the office every week inside David Eshelman has a client that has special needs, comes every Thursday morning, talk about answering a call, puts this insert in this bulletin for you. Um, the flowers behind me, Wendy Ford, she arranges flowers, she answered a call. She said, I'll do that for you for free every Sunday. I will arrange flowers for you. The little altar candles, the Jesus candles, they're little elves making sure that doesn't go out. And also the candle lighters for the acolytes. Sandy, do you still do that? She's here. Oh, she's, oh, she's over there. She does that. Um, the acolytes actually um, come here 15 minutes early. Their parents have to get them here in order for them to start worship. There's so many things. If you have this urge to bring peanut butter and canned tuna for the food pantry or donate money to missions or go to the mission team and join or bring toiletries for the care kits, God's calling you and you're answering these little calls. When coffee service happens, somebody brings the food, sets it up, cleans it up all little calls that are answered. Each member has a task to do, however prominent or humbly unseen. When we all contribute of our gifts and time, the body of the church functions as it should. So after all that, do you think you might be screening some of God's calls to you? How many times has he called you and you've ignored his messages or his nudges or his God appointments? Did you turn the ringer off? Did you put him on hold? Did you hang up on, uh, on him entirely? Believe me, it is time for you to answer. Don't be afraid. You're missing a perfect, most important opportunity to experience life, live the way God intended, which is just filled with joy and lived joyfully. Amen. Thank you for listening to the First United Methodist Church podcast, which is recorded live every week at 4832 Tahunga Avenue, in North Hollywood, California, and delivered by Dr. Joey McDonald. For more info on us, please check out nohofumc.com or find us on Facebook and Twitter under nohofumc.